I'm Andy Graves. In this video, I'll be showing you how to work the first 12 rounds of my Whirlwind Afghan Square. For this project, you're going to need five colors of worsted weight yarn. I'm using Lion Brand Yarns Heartland, and for the sample, I've picked five colors. First four colors will be the colors of my center spiral, and this fifth color will be the frame in round number 10. I've also chosen to use a I 5 millimeter hook but you should use whatever hook size lets you get gauge. You'll also need stitch markers, and you need eight stitch markers, four in one color, three in another color, and one in a distinctive color. And I'll show you how to use these as we're going along in this video. Then, of course, a pair of scissors, a yarn needle for tidying up ends, and tape measure for measuring gauge, and to make sure your square's coming out the size you want it. Starting with color A, we're gonna make an adjustable slip knot. This means that the beginning tail tightens the loop on the hook, like so. I pull on this, tightens it. In our round one, we're going to start with a chain two. And we're going to do a single crochet and a half double crochet in the second chain from the hook, going under the first leg here. We've gotten the first two stitches for color A done. We're going to pull up a long loop, take the hook out, let that loop drop to the side going to get our color B here and I don't attach with a slip knot or anything of that nature because we're going to have this all tightened up in the center here. So I'm going to pull up a loop, get that beginning tail kind of out of my way. I'm going to chain one and working over that tail do another single crochet and a half double crochet. Don't worry if this is a little wonky at first because it will work out. We're going to just repeat the same thing, work into this. And we're still working into that second chain, but you see how it's opening up because of the adjustable slip knot? That way we don't have to fight to make these stitches in here. I'm just going to join color C, and then I'm going to do the same thing with color C and color D that I did with B. I've gotten all four colors worked in here. I'm going to find my beginning tail again because it's trying to hide. And what I do is just gently holding my work between my thumb and forefinger. I'm going to pull on this tail. My beginning tail is trying to hop up. Pull on this tail, and we've got four little bits of color on a look almost like a little square. This is when we add. Our stitch markers. What we're going to do is we're going to place a green stitch marker, and the green stitch markers are going to show the first increase point in every color section. And for that, our work here, it's like that's that single crochet we just made. I'm going to place that one. You can see that's all four of our increase points that are marked. Our orange markers are marking increase points, but they're also marking the end of a section of color. So, placing that one there, we have our orange increase markers. They're showing us where the end of color is, as well as an increase. This marker is going to mark the last stitch of the row, as well as an increase point, and as well as the end of a section of color. It does triple duty. For round two, we're going to be working two half double crochets in each stitch. So every stitch that is marked is going to get two stitches in it. And we're going to be working four stitches in each color. You'll see as I go along. From this point forward, for this project through round nine, we're always going to be working half double crochet stitches. Now if you've never worked a half double crochet, yarn over once, just like you would with a double crochet, go into the stitch, pull up a loop, Cut three loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops. It's a really easy stitch. We've got two stitches in that first one. I'm going to remove my stitch marker and move it to the second stitch I made. After I place that stitch marker, I'm going to do two half double crochets in this next stitch. And because this next stitch is marked, with my orange marker, I know that it's the end of this color section. So again, I'm going to pull up my loop, drop it, I'm going to move my stitch marker, 
up to the second stitch. I just made these two. Place my stitch marker right here. Now I'm going to the next color section. I've inserted my hook in the long loop. I'm just going to snug it down on my hook. Don't snug it down too tight. You want a little space. I'm just going to set that right. You want a little space at the bottom of your hook here. Can you see that little space? And I'm going to come over here where the green marker is. I'm going to do two half double crochets. Move my stitch marker. Two stitches here. Pull up a long loop. Move my stitch marker. This wants to open up here. I'm just going to pull on that loop and snug it down. It's a little bit of adjusting as we go along here. The center keeps wanting to open up a little too. We just pull on our tail to fix that. After we get a few rounds in, you can go ahead and weave this tail in and that'll secure that center so it won't open on you anymore. We've got one, two, three, four stitches in each color. And you can count them either by starting with the first stitch past the end of round marker. And if you notice, the end of round marker is now in a different color because we've moved everything forward a group. So it doesn't matter which yarn you start with in each um, round because your, all your colors are going to end either on a yellow or an orange marker. We're ready to start round three. This is when the stitch markers really become handy. We're going to work one half double crochet in each unmarked stitch and we're going to work two half double crochets in each marked stitch. The wonderful thing about this is you know exactly what to do each time you reach a stitch marker. When you reach your end of color stitch marker you know to stop with your current color now here's a fun little trick about working in rounds. You know what round you're in by the number of stitches between increases. So for round three, if I count here, it's one, two, three stitches. That lets me know I'm in round three. And so that's how you can keep track of what round you're in. Now if you're feeling pretty confident, you can just go ahead and work colors until you have eight rounds finished because you're going to be doing exactly the same thing. You're going to be working one stitch in each unmarked stitch and you're going to be working two stitches in each marked stitch and you just keep going on like that until you reach your end of your eighth round. In round nine we're going to do something different and at the end of round five we're going to measure our gauge. So at the end of round three we have 24 half double crochets all the way around or as is I find easier to count six stitches in each color section. So you count from where a color section ends. You count that first stitch and then the next six. And you should have six in each of these color sections. Now it's time to measure gauge. Get out the handy dandy tape measure measure across. I usually go in this flat little section here where there are single stitches across the center. I'm going to lay it down here and I go across. And I have three and a half. I should have four. So I'm a little short in my gauge which means that if you go smaller I need to go up a hook size to get to my actual gauge. If your project is larger you can actually go down a hook size in order to get gauge. In this case there's a third choice as well which is you can adjust the size of the square when you start getting to the squaring rounds after we've gone from circle to square. Now we're ready to start round six. As you've seen we can just keep going along until we reach a stitch marker and we work two and keep going along. Well, one of the neat things that you can do is you don't have to just work one section of color at a time. And I'm going to show you when I get to the end of round six exactly what I mean by that. I'm at the end of round six and I haven't taken my hook out here and extended this loop because I want to show you what you've probably already figured out for yourself working this. Normally when you're working this you're going to just keep working until you run out of stitches. So what I'm going to do here is because I worked this section and I had all these pink stitches to work into which is my color A 
and there's still more pink stitches I can work into. So instead of pulling up this loop to begin round seven by moving to another color, I'm just going to stay in the color I'm at and keep going until I run out of those pink stitches. And once I run out of those pink stitches, or color A stitches, I'll pick up color A and I'll start working it. We're ready to begin round nine. And in round nine, we're stepping down these little stair steps that we get with our spiral arms because we're preparing to change from a circle to a square. And in each color section, you'll begin as you did in the other rounds by working one half double crochet in each of the unmarked stitches. And when you reach the first marker, you're going to work two stitches. Now is when things are going to change. We're going to work a half double crochet in the next six stitches. Now in the seventh stitch here, we're going to actually work a single crochet. And in this last stitch that has the marker, we're going to work a slip stitch. And we're going to keep this slip stitch loose. We're not using this as a joining slip stitch. We're using it as a step down, and we're actually going to work into that stitch in the next round. I'm going to fasten off my yarn with about an 8-inch tail because I'm going to make one more stitch when I get to the end of all this. Pull that loop up so I don't lose it. In fact, I'm going to take this stitch marker out here and place it into the loop to kind of help secure that loop. Pull that down for the moment. Now I'm going to go on and I'm going to do the same thing all the way around. All right, I've gotten to the end. I've worked every color, done the six half double crochets, a single crochet, and a slip stitch. And I'm going to remove this stitch marker. In the first stitch of the next color that I had worked in this round, I'm going to do another slip stitch. And this is just to finish up. Pull that through. And I'm actually going to tighten that guy up. And that helps. As you see, we've got a nice line now at the top of our stitches. I'm going to go back to the other ones that I had before. Pull up that loop. Insert my hook. And that slip stitch got kind of tightened up, so I'm going to redo my last slip stitch. And make the final slip stitch. Snug that down, fastened up. I do this all the way around. And this way we've got a nice clean step down and what this also does because you see how this slip stitch wants to shrink up. Oh, hold him up here a little closer. He wants to get smaller. You see how big the top of the stitch is but this slip stitch has gotten really small. So I'm going to take him out make that stitch a little bigger because on my next round when I'm trying to work into that stitch I do not want to have to fight with it. So by having the second slip stitch it helps keep that first slip stitch from going too small. Still a little small but it should be all right. Give it a little tug there. And our last one here with our color A. Expand this guy a little bit. Put my hook in the loop and pull it up and through. 